Dear O-Level students, it's now about one month from O-Levels and I have received word from parents and students themselves that some of you are feeling very demotivated during this time. Even though it is the most crucial last lap, I'm sure you've heard this many times from your teachers and parents that it's a cliche now. This is the last lap, like it's time to push hardest. And yet, you are feeling worse than ever, more demotivated than ever. Maybe because of the study break, no school, then procrastination is hitting you. Maybe it's not for all subjects, but maybe a particular subject that you're feeling demotivated to. So if that's you, this message is a motivational speech. Okay, I'm going to give you a motivational speech at the start. It's going to sound cliche, but I'm going to really put myself in your shoes and tell you what you need because I've been there before. I've been in your shoes. And as a student, what I cared about was having fun, playing games with my friends. But I also cared about studying. And so I had to balance this tension between having as much fun during my childhood and scoring the good grades that everybody wants. So I've been there, I understand it, and hopefully what I'm going to say is what you need to from someone who has been where you are. I'm making this especially for our TBT students. And some of the things I'm going to talk about here are unique to you if you're a TBT student because you have certain advantages, privileges, and resources that the rest of Singapore doesn't have. But even if you're just a non-TBT student or you're not even taking bio, I think you will benefit from this message. Okay, so I'm going to give you three points in my short motivational speech right now of mindset shifts that will help you increase your motivation levels. Number one, it is really the last lap. Don't give up during this last lap. It is the last segment. You have been working for two years, studying in school, whether you want to or not, but you have been taught the syllabus, right? For two years, you've been leading up to this exam. It's going to be such a waste if you throw that away, having studied for two years for this exam. So you're going to take the exam anyway. You have studied for two years leading up to this exam anyway. Why not just score well for it? And the time is going to pass anyway. Whether you procrastinate or not, no matter your attitude towards this last month of studying, no matter how you feel about the exam, the time is going to pass anyway. Whether you choose to slack off, whether you choose to have a bad attitude to it and say, you know what, there's nothing I can do already. I hate this, you know, I hate this subject or I hate studying in general. Regardless, the time is going to pass. The exam is still going to pass on that day. The deadline is not changing. You will be taking the exam. It's just, do you want to take it with confidence? And even if you don't know all the answers, do you want to take it with a solace knowing that, yes, I've prepared as much as I could for it? Or do you want to take it with the fear and the dread in you, knowing that you are not prepared, you didn't study enough, and the guilt as well. Before the exam, during the exam, and after the exam, you're going to feel the guilt. So if the time is going to pass anyway, I would rather pass the time with a positive attitude and without the guilt, instead with the assurance that I have done what I could. If the time is going to pass anyway, I'd rather aim for as high of a grade as I can, even though I can't get my C5 to an A1, it's okay. If I can get it to a B3, that's so much better. I'd rather do that since the time is going to pass anyway. Now, some of you, your monkey brain is thinking, but I want to slack off, you know, I want to procrastinate because I want to have fun. But here's the sad truth, okay? So monkey brain, I'm speaking to you right now, the monkey part of your brain. You see, you will never enjoy slacking off during this time because every moment you will know at the back of your head you are wasting time when you should be studying for the last lap. So you're going to be guilty whenever you slack off. So you cannot fully enjoy the fun, whether it's playing games or whatever, watching shows, you cannot enjoy it because at the back of your mind, you're going to feel the guilt. So monkey brain, give up, okay? My message to you is just give up on it. Y you want to enjoy, right? I know we all want the pleasure, but you cannot enjoy it. It's like you love ice cream, but there's a little bit of poop in the ice cream that tastes horrible and smells horrible. So yes, you can, you can eat the ice cream, but you're always going to taste a bit of that poop and smell that poop. So you cannot enjoy the ice cream now. If you wait till after your exams to enjoy it, there will be no poop. There will be no guilt left. So if you're going to have guilt stacking off now, then it's not worth it. It's just not worth it, right? You can't enjoy it. Now, I'm going to speak to a, a small segment of you who feel that there's no hope for this subject, okay? And now I'm talking about bio specifically, O-level, pure biology. Now, it can apply to your other subjects as well, huh? If maybe for one of them, you feel no hope for it. Okay, so some students, they feel that there's no hope for the subject, even though there's two years of me like preparing for this exam, right? There's just no hope. I'm going to get F9 no matter what I do. And so it's going to be a smarter choice to just throw it out the window. Okay, F9, who cares? Because... There's nothing you can do anyway. And I'd rather spend my time on the other subjects. Okay, there's a small, small fraction of you who will feel like that for some of your subject. And if that is your case, 
and you truly are the rare minority that this is applicable for, then yes, I think you're right. And I think it's actually a wise move to throw the subject out and not because there's really nothing we can do for it. So that is for a rare minority of students. What about the majority of students? Some of you are feeling like that, that there's no hope. I'm just going to throw it out the window. But it will be horrible stain on your O-level cert. And I know you don't want that. So if you can do something about it, if instead of being an F9, it can be a B4, I think I'd rather take the B4 in my report card than an F9. So just keep in mind that this advice of throwing it out because there's nothing I can do is going to apply for a very small fraction of you because most of you can do something about it. And if you're taking pure biology, right, G3 bio, pure bio, now it's called G3, in next year onwards, you have a significant level of ability to be able to take pure bio because most schools don't allow students to take pure bio unless they have shown that their ability is strong, right? You may, you may not be the genius, but your ability is still strong enough where it's significant. The schools say, okay, yes, you pass. We allow you to take pure biology or G3 bio. So that's why I know, I know that only a very small minority of students are the ones where they should drop the subject or they should just ignore the subject at this point. So I'm going to get my video editor to link on the screen now and in the description of this video I made to know whether you should drop bio or not. And after you watch that video, I think you will realize that most of you, you're not capable of improvement. And so most of you should not give up. Okay, mindset shift number two is that you have everything you need already to improve. So, especially for our TBT students, you have all our resources. We hold nothing back from you, right? For the rest of Singapore, we give them our free notes. We have our YouTube videos, some of the crash courses in our YouTube videos, in our YouTube playlist as well. That's why if you're a G3 or Pure Bio student, you should subscribe to this channel and check out our playlist. So you have a lot of resources, even if you're not a student here. But if you are a student here, you have our entire fast track system, content, if you are weak in it. You have our full notes, which show you only what you need to know for O levels and nothing more, so you don't waste your brain space. Memory shortcuts, so that you can memorize more efficiently in our notes. If you need explanations for any topic at all, any concept, we have crash course clips for you as our student. So please just go to the Google Drive and watch those crash course clips to get a proper teaching of any concept you want at all in the syllabus. Because I know that sometimes teachers rush through and you didn't get taught properly or you just forgot because it's so long ago. It's okay. You can get a reteaching of it, any concept you want. And you probably need help from your tutor. You need to ask questions on WhatsApp. Any time of the week, you can do that. Please do that. And a lot of you have been sending me your prelim paper too to comment and to critique your OEQ answers because your answering skills are lacking. Yes, please do that. Please send to your tutors, right? At this point in time, it takes us a significant amount of time. Each student, right? Every time there's a paper to send to me, it can take me up to an hour to mark and comment because we do it very detailed and we're not just putting it through some AI processing to generate some generic comments on how you can improve, but we're actually marking, you know, with, with the inkings and like where we're striking out redundant things, where we're, we're arrowing like, oh, you should move this part here because it's the conclusions, the outcome. Don't put it in the middle of your answer, put it at the end. So this takes a lot of time, but it's the highest quality and it's what helps you the most. So at this time in the year, we're not afraid as tutors at TBT to sacrifice our time. Yeah, because this is the last time and we, and we want to help you. So you have everything you need. As a TBT student here, you have everything you need to improve. And I repeat again, even if you can't bring that C5 to an A1 because you lack the time, if you can bring that to a B3, it's still so much better than doing nothing. Okay, at this point, I want to rant about something. Okay, a lot of teachers, school teachers, tell the students, you should just drop bio, you should just drop the subject. And every single year, we have students who make huge improvements in our tuition who have been told to drop the subject last time. Last year, right, one of our students, Zero, right, I'm going to get my editor to put a screenshot of her great improvement and a testimonial from our website. So she went from E8 to A2 and her teacher told her, you should just drop the subject. But in class, I see how she answers questions. She's mentally engaged. She understands. She can answer questions back. Then I'm like, this is a above average student. Why is the teacher telling you to drop the subject? Okay, then another student I have this year, right, and she, she got A2 in her prelims. She also told me that before she joined our tuition in February of this year, her school teacher also said drop the subject. So I, I, I'm really shocked and I'm bewildered at this phenomenon. School teachers who are supposed to empower the youth, right? You guys. Instead of empowering you to know that I have ability, I, I may not be perfect and I don't know everything and I am overwhelmed, but it's okay because I can improve, right? That is the mindset all, all of you us should have. But instead of empowering you with that mindset, you are discouraged. And I'm not saying all school teachers are like that, but a huge amount of bio school teachers, right? Especially for pure bio, seem to have that attitude to, towards the students. Because I keep hearing this from multiple students. And so it makes you think that you suck 
and that you are bad and fundamentally you can't improve. Okay, so that's a lie. That's a lie because everyone can improve. So I'll tell you a bit of lore. When I was in my second and third year of teaching this subject, I remember walking home one day and feeling this imposter syndrome. Even though I knew that we are the best in the whole country for teaching this syllabus. Tuition for this syllabus, no one is as crazy specialized as us. No one has the amount of resources we have. No one is in contact with the MOE teachers to constantly ask them, is this accurate? Is this why it's tested? Oh, it's not our, it's our syllabus already? Okay, good. So even though the schools are teaching it, this concept is actually out of syllabus. And so we tell the students, don't worry, school may test it, but oh, no, will not test it. It's not required. You can save your brain space. So we know we have the best tuition for this subject, pure bio, in the whole country. But still, I feel the imposter syndrome. So I remember walking home that day and I had to overcome this feeling with the facts that we are the best. So I repeated this in my head that, yes, I am not perfect, but I am always improving. I am not perfect, but I'm always improving. So I repeated this and it really cured the imposter syndrome. Yes, I know that we are not perfect and I still fall short from what I know could be the best possible tuition for, for you guys. But we are always improving and that is true. Every month we improve. Our notes keep improving. Our notes keep getting more accurate to the syllabus. Our resources keep getting more helpful. Yeah. So repeat that to yourself. If you have been sold the lie that you suck and you cannot improve, sometimes by your own school teachers, then use the phrase that I use myself, which is, I'm not perfect, but I'm always improving, right? Or I can improve. I, I'm overwhelmed, but I can improve. I don't know all the facts. I haven't memorized everything, but I can memorize some more. I'm, I'm going to tell you a story of two dogs. This is an experiment that they did. So one dog was put into a room and was given electric shocks. Obviously, that's not comfortable, right? And there's a button on the floor. Now the dog can press the button and it realizes that whenever I press the button, the electric shocks will stop. Then the researchers will shock the dog again and he'll press the button and it stops. So soon the dog learns, every time I get shocked, just press the button and it'll stop. In another cage, there is a second dog with the same setup. Only one exception. The button is useless. So the researchers would turn on the shocking machine as and when randomly and the dog would fiddle with the button but nothing happens, it doesn't help. So soon the dog learns, I can't do anything to stop the shocks. I just have to accept them. So now, second stage. They move both dogs to a new room. And in this new room, half the room on the floor shocks the dogs. But the other half of the room has no shocks. So as long as the dog crosses over, they'll be fine. So they put both dogs in the shocking section first. And so both of them are obviously now uncomfortable. They're getting shocked. The first dog, which did the button pressing and, and could stop, right? It walked over. It tried to find a solution. So it, it, there was no button, but it, it walked around. And soon it realized that if I'm on the right side of the room, I, I'm not shocked. I'm safe. But the second dog, you know what it did? It just lay down on the floor and, and just accepted the shocks, just received the shocks again and again. Why? Because it had learned from the previous experience, I can't help myself. I can't do anything to help my situation. So now in a situation where it can literally just walk and get up and move and it'll be fine, it just takes it. You know what? Whatever comes in life, I just have to suck it up. I just have to take it. There is nothing I can do. So that is called learned helplessness, where someone learns from a previous experience that there's nothing they can do. So when challenges come in future, they adopt the same mindset and they don't even try to, to do anything, even though the solution is so easy. So you probably, if you're feeling unmotivated, especially about this subject, then I'm here to break the news to you. You are the second dog. In your past, you have learned helplessness. You have maybe been discouraged by your school teacher. Maybe it's no one in particular. Maybe it's just you tried studying a bit for an exam, but you flopped. And so you subconsciously tell yourself, putting in effort for this subject yields no results. So I'm not even going to try. Okay, so how to solve this problem, right? Half the battle is already won because now you're aware of it. Having awareness that you are the second dog and all you need to do is just get up and walk to the other side already empowers you. You have the power to improve. So now that you know it, especially for our students, okay, you may have been discouraged in the past. But now that you are in our tuition, you have all the resources you need. You have your tutor's help, right? And if you think that you're so dumb that you cannot understand the concepts, well, that's what asking your tutor is for, right? So we explain it to you, no matter how dumb your question is. No matter how dumb you think you are, we will still find a simple enough explanation to explain to you. And so far, I have not had a student who could not understand any concept. Because even if they are like, ah, I don't get it, 
I will just explain in another way such that you understand it. Yeah. So we can always make the explanation simpler and simpler and simpler such that when we break it to the fundamentals, if you even pass your PSLE, if you are even in secondary school, then you can understand. So the, the, the barrier, right, to cross over is very low. Just like how the dogs walking over to the other side is very easy to do. So you have the ability, you have the power and you have all the resources at your disposal. Okay, now for mindset tip number three is that you will never regret having good grades because it benefits you for the rest of your life in, in lots of things, such as choosing courses, choosing the school, credibility, etc. Okay, let me tell you about my experience in bad grades and good grades. Okay, so in primary four to six, I was selected for the gifted education program, the GEP. And very, very few students in my school, in my primary school, got into the program. So now everyone is saying, oh, you know, like you're in GEP, you must be so smart. Okay, and I was put in a class, a GEP class with all the other smart kids, who most of them are smarter than me. Then PSLE came and because... I was addicted to a phone game. I flopped, okay? Like, I, I scored better than most students in Singapore, but it's still a very low score for my class. In fact, I scored the lowest grade in my class, my, the lowest PSI score in my class. And, you know, everyone was disappointed. My parents are disappointed. They're like, how can you, who went to GP, score such a low score, right? A relatively low score compared to your classmates. And I'm going to get my video editor now to link that video on screen about how I scored the lowest PSLE score in my class, as well as he will put it in the description of this video. So you can watch that video if you want. Check it out. So that was me having a low score. And till today, it is still a negative state on my portfolio. It is still a negative stain for me and it has bad memories. But now let me tell you the good grades and how that feels. So I went to Raffles Institution after PSLE. Even despite my low score, I was really blessed that they accepted me through DSA. They accepted me through direct school admission because I was a GEP kid. But then I felt bad. I felt like I don't belong here because I scored badly and I'm only here because of my GEP status. So I, I wanted to prove, you know, to myself and to other people that I deserve to be in this school, in RI. I didn't come here just because I'm GP kid, but because I actually have the ability and I can score well. So in sec 3 and 4, I had a GPA of 3.65 out of 4. So 4.0 is like the highest GPA you can get. So I got 3.65, which is still pretty high. So that's probably like top 20% in, in, in the whole of RI. Yeah, students who are scoring around this for sec 3 to 4 is probably top 20%. So I, I proved to myself that I deserve my place in this school, not just because I'm a DSA kid. So did I regret the mugging during the sec 3 and 4? No, I didn't regret it. Do I regret the grade? No, in fact, I'm pretty proud of it. And for the rest of my life, it's going to be a factor that reminds me I have the ability to improve. Now, let me tell you about JC. So I went to Raffles JC after that. And I it was the most mugging I ever did in my life. And also the most amount of tuition that I, I attended. And I don't regret a single bit of it because I got all A's for my A-levels. So let me tell you about the benefits of getting very good grades, like all A's. So I could choose any uni course I wanted. Medicine, dentistry, computer science, law, all the prestigious top ones are open to me because like literally you scored the, the highest grade possible. So there is no grade barrier that you can't cross already. So that's really good benefits. Okay, And because of my grades also, NUS offered their scholarship to me. So I don't even need to pay for the university fees. And there's no bond. Like you just get free uni and no bond. You don't have to like serve the bond at NUS or something, which is a really good deal. So this is all because of the good grades I scored. So I don't regret it, right? I will never regret. And even beyond education, beyond your studies, right? What about in the job market, in the working world? So personally for me, when I started this tuition business, it gave me a lot of credibility because of the good grades. Like, do you think that students will come to me as easily at the start if I didn't have such good grades. And now we have tons of testimonials because of the results we have given to our students. But at the start, when I didn't have those testimonials, of course, these good grades of mine helped to attract them. Now, let's talk about other than tuition, right? Because you might not become a tutor. But whatever, poly course, JC, uni course, job that you apply to in future, your good grades will never hurt you. They will never hurt you, right? They are on only going to boost your credibility and your portfolio. So in summary, you will never regret studying hard. You will never regret scoring well. But what you will regret is being addicted to a phone game when it was the last lap near to your major exam and scoring the lowest grade in your class. And, you know, only by huge lucky chance getting in the school you want. So those are my three mindset shifts to help you be motivated during this O-level period. Especially for our TBT students, you really have whatever you need. And even if you can't get A1, but if you can increase your grade, it is still so much more worth it than doing nothing. And you will never regret it. I promise you, you will never regret studying hard. You will never regret putting in the hours. Even if you don't score the highest grade, you will still not regret it.
And this video is getting quite long, so I'm actually going to film a second short video now for you. My video editor will pop it up on the screen as well as in the description right now. Click on it, it's about five practical steps to increase your motivation when studying. So in this video, we talk about the mindset, right? But how can you actually, what are the little hacks you can use to increase your motivation when studying? So watch that. It's a part two continuation of this video right now. 